Walter Rover called you. You're welcome indeed to another edition of the programme. Now, don't forget later on, we're crossing over to Manchester to join Martin Logan, who's out and about with the Irish community right across the UK. This week, we have a very, very special show because we're coming to you from downtown Castlebar. As you can see behind me, the voluntary committee are putting in final preparations for this year's St. Patrick's Day Parade. It's going to be a fabulous event. Hopefully, the sun will stay shining. And the day has started off with a very special breakfast for this year's Grand Marshal. for the most to be the Grand Marshal that I said well wouldn't it be nice to start off with a breakfast because it gets the whole uh, event off the ground in the morning and it brings people together rather than just looking out at the parade and uh, Tomas's friends are here and, uh, uh, and his family so everybody's having the traditional Irish breakfast but the nice thing about this event as well that the proceeds are, are going to charity as well Henry, you, you never leave a, a stone unturned, and thanks for reminding me. Yeah, the guide dogs, we don't know what we'll make naturally, but whatever is left from the experiences will go to the guide dogs. And we got the sash uh, from the guide dogs as well, which is great. Well, but there's a num number of presentations, isn't there, as yes, well? Yes, there are, Henry. Uh, there's Mary Conlon Keller, her one. And, of course, we have uh, got a special St. Patrick's Day cake as well. And Michael, uh, Mick Burden in the pub, Mick is putting the sash on, on Tomas as well. And as I said, we have Marie Walsh here. Marie, you're the very special guest at this inaugural breakfast in Castlebar. It's very special morning. What way to kick off our national uh, big day holiday? And uh, it's very special when I'm I got acknowledged and asked to join. Um, big day, and as you can hear from the noise, it's going to be a fun morning. This is, of course, this is something big in America, isn't it? The breakfast and uh, starts off the Patrick's Day celebrations in style. Yeah, it is. It is actually very, very big. You know, we used to do them in New York and Philadelphia quite a bit, and they were called sober St. Patrick's Days. Uh, but you can tell from this crowd, there's no need for any kind of message like that. But I'm delighted it's come across the, the waters here, and I think it's going to take off. In the last couple of weeks, the more and more people I was telling about, I'm going to a uh, 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 like a sober St. Patrick's honoring our Grand Marshal, and I, I and it was it was gaining traction. You could see. The, the wheels in the in the brain moving and I hope and I do hope it takes off across the country because what a way to bring people together our country are built on people having conversations around a dinner table or a breakfast table and this what what, what better way to do that than than today Back a long way. I call them Langan <laughs> because I call them many a thing. Yeah, but Langan would be possibly the most popular because really and truly there's something special about this one. It'll yeah. never be known the amount of hard work, the concerts, the fundraisers, the people that he has had out, held down, uh, helped out down throughout the years with his concerts and the whole lot. He gives his time invaluably to everybody. Anybody that ever wants anything done, Langan. And it's my privilege to know him, I suppose, well, for the last 10 years. Quietly spoken man, a man who loves a few pints, well, a good few pints, <laughs> a cigarette, a bit of crack, the banter, and a good laugh, and a good story. And isn't that all we all want? A bit of fun, and a bit of laugh. But you know, I'm honored, because really and truly, it's all about the friendship, it's about the people in life. Tom Langan is an ambassador for Castle Bar. He's one of the finest men, and I've said that for a that have ever come out of the town of Castle Bar. Tom, have a great day. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you.
find out more about this year's Grand Marshal, we caught up with him at work at Murray Ambulance Service. Hello, Murray Ambulance. Tomorrow speaking. Tomorrow, okay, no problem. And what's your own name? John. And have you a number of John that I can contact, John? Great. And what's the name of your patient there, uh, John? Poor old Dylan. And where, where, where is he going to? That's no problem at all. We, that we'll, uh, we'll look after you there. So after a number of years um, after establishment, we started to expand and we needed um, some more people to help us with ambulance control. It's hard enough to find somebody that has that kind of a qualification. But as it happens, I was going along Chapel Street and I met Tomás and Usher out for a walk. I'd known Tomás when he worked on the switchboard at the Sacred Heart Hospital when I was based there myself with the Western Health Board Ambulance Service. And I knew that Tomás had some experience in ambulance control at that time. So we had the crack. He came out, had a cup of tea with us, met the people here, and we decided we'd go into training and see would it work out for him and for us. And thankfully it did work out for both of us because six years on he's still here, thankfully, and is a great addition to Murray Ambulance Service. Uh, initially we had some adaptations to make, very small. Of course we had to have a dog in the workplace for the first time, which was interesting to say the very least, but we're dog lovers in our own house so that wasn't an issue. Because we are a national kind of service and before Tomás would have worked with the Western Health Board in a fairly confined area. He had to try and get his bearings in relation to where was Limerick in relation to Nina or Limerick in relation to Clare or um, we'd say Navin in relation to Louth, that kind of thing. So we looked to get a map, a braille map that he could follow. Uh, unfortunately it drew a blank. So we then got an ordinary road map covered it with a sheet of perspex. We etched out the main roads with an engraving tool and then Tomás had a label maker and we could label where the hospitals were. And in that way, Tomás then could feel on the map where each hospital was in relation to other hospitals or where the cities where the people were coming from. Uh, after about a month, Tomás didn't need it anymore because he had it committed to his memory and he commits a lot of stuff to his memory, which is very good for us. So I would say to other people, you know, we make adjustments for everybody in the workplace, whether it's work life balance or family balance, particularly with people who have children and child mildling issues. We make adjustments in our company for that and other companies can do that. We have one guy who works with who's particularly tall. We had to raise his work station almost four inches, <laughs> which dwarfs everybody else if they sit at that. But it's an adjustment that we didn't even think about and the small adjustments that we have made for Tomás because of his blindness or visual imperity is not a big issue. Yeah, so this is a normal Windows computer and there's extra software that's loaded onto the computer and it's software that speaks to me. It gives me audio feedback for what's on the actual screen. So it reads the screen. This allows me to function Normally, in a day-to-day -day environment here at work, I can read all the different calls that are, that are pending, that are completed, what times they have to be done, and I can enter text, enter calls, uh, check lists, check to-do lists, appointments, etc. The whole works, read email, all from the computer, just like anybody else. Log on to the internet, and as I navigate the internet, I'll show you, just for example, I'll go to, let's say, uh, castlebar.ie and hit enter. And there I have the Castlebar website up. Welcome to Castlebar. So this is your normal iPhone here that I use. Uh, sometimes you have to text your, your crews or, you know, send messages in, in, in the day-to-day -day line of work. Um, so this is a Braille uh, keyboard here. Uh, Braille, you have a six dots keyboard in Braille uh, uh, to resemble the six numbers in a Braille cell and you hold the phone on its side uh, and it's like you're playing an accordion you know you have three fingers on the left three fingers on the right so i'm just going to say hello brendan hello 
Hello, Brendan. How are you today? So there you go now, and you have the phone there with the message written. Hello, Brendan. How are you today? I wrote the message in Braille, but it's been transcribed automatically by the phone into the print text that you can see there in front of you. Okay, it's time for us to take a break. Don't go away because we've all the excitement of the parade coming up in part two. So we'll see you in a couple of minutes. It's an integral part of Castlebar, the, the life of Castlebar, an annual event. brings all the communities together, all the different organisations, and it's a real uh, community spirit in St. Patrick's Day Parade. Hopefully it'll clear up for the day, and it's looking like that. And, and the committee have put in a great lot of work here this morning under uh, torrentious weather this morning. They've got the, uh, the floor or the stand ready, so hopefully it'll be a great day. Connor, why did you enjoy, uh, join the committee? Well, I, lo I love uh, participating in volunteerism around the town. It's our national day. I'm delighted to be involved in it. I marched in it with the Reserve Defence Force for over 25 years. So it's a natural progression that when I finish with the march and that I help out. Uh, uh, you see the, the guys that have been doing it for years uh, get criticised if it was called off due to bad weather. Our new motto is the parade goes ahead regardless. It's up to you to decide whether you partake or not. But the parade will go ahead at two sharp. You have a double role here today, I'd say, because you're also involved in the pantomime and they're very active in the parade. We are, we are now. Um, I'm so looking forward to it again. I'm doing the same as I did last year now. I'm dressing up as Mickey Mouse. Won't be a spoiler because it'll be all over. But the kids love it. And it's great fun as well because no one knows who you are under the costume. So you can catch a lot of people out. But we're so looking forward to it now. We'll have characters now, some Disney characters, some fairy tale characters. And everyone's having a bit of a laugh. And it's all about great fun. It's wonderful to see the, all, the, all the flags today, all the Mio flags, all the, all the tricolours that are flying high, and all the people, all the volunteers. And I want to compliment uh, each and everyone uh, for turning out. All the, all the schools that have practised all week, all the marching bands, and they're coming from all over. We're having them from all over the country here today. And it's absolutely it's one of the biggest and the best ever parades in the county town. And I'm delighted to be here uh, as Cahirlock, the Mio County Council, in my own town. Liam, you're responsible for a lot of the planning for today's St. Patrick's Day Parade in Castlebar. Responsible for the area up here at the top of McHale Road and trying to get the parade around Castlebar smoothly and in one piece. So what's That's the plan now today. today? The plan today, we're currently forming up at the top of McHale Road, outside the McHale Park entrance. At 2 o'clock is kick-off time and we're going to bring the parade around the town in the traditional route. The logistics of organising the parade to get this from here to the review and stand it's quite an undertaking it's an undertaking but if you have good switched on people helping out it makes things an awful lot easier so what's your biggest concern now today before it gets underway the main concern today is hopefully the weather and the rain will hold off and uh, so that the kids and the rest of us can have a good enjoyable day what do you enjoy and what did the kids enjoy mostly about the parade uh, they love the, they love marching. They love the drums, following the drums, and and uh, going around the town and and being on show. And yeah. uh, I did it myself as a child, and with with uh, in the band, and, and I'm still involved in it every year since as an yeah. adult. And they they have that excitement. They love it. There's a lot of work preparing the float for today. Yeah, it took a while. It took a little bit of a genius uh, making up the the, the alley, uh, the old style alley, and uh, painting it up and putting on the the Mayo colours and the Carnacone Handball Club colours. The Foxford Brass and Reed Band has been in existence um, since 1896. We have from nine years old all the way up to 80. So you'll be looking forward to hearing, um, so seeing some well. Um, trained marching and some new marching and then um, you'll be hearing some some of our standard marches a lot of the Irish marches given that it's St. Patrick's Day. And you you head the, the, the group here, the band here? I'm the, they call me the band master. So it's the, the first woman that they've had leading the band uh, and when we started it was me and 18 men. So now we have me and 
about 60 others and it's split down the middle between men and women and boys and girls. The theme of the parade is uh, the last hundred years in Castlebar. So our float is trying to represent two angles. One, the activities that take place in the shed and what the shed is about to attract newcomers. Secondly, our cottage represents older Ireland where we have the whitewashed cottage with a thatch roofed and an open fire, as you will see, with the hob and a couple of men probably sitting around uh, talking and uh, starting world affairs. The organising committee, which, which I'm part of, we're, we're delighted with this year's parade. We're delighted with the numbers that were involved, where the participation was extremely high. And, and this year, despite the weather, and we only had one bad shower today, we had a great turnout on the streets. We had a fantastic day. Um, I think one of the largest parades we've seen in the town for many years. All of the schools turned out, big, big, big floats. And um, I think a historic moment as well to have Thomas Langan with his guide dog as Grand Marshal for the parade. I think it was a special day for the town, for him and, and for the parade. It was an excellent parade, one of the best years I think that the parade has been. And uh, thank God the weather held out, there was only the one shower. The shoes are a bit wet Henry, but uh, there's no doubt they'll dry out. Um, but it was excellent and I'm delighted for all the people that took part, all the bands and of course our Chief Marshal Thomas. This was the biggest, the best ever in Kesselbear. I'm delighted uh, to see that and I'm delighted also to be a part of the of the committee because it doesn't happen easy. We have a great committee in Kesselbear, we have great people in Kesselbear. This is the county town. It's only right and proper that we'd have the best parade in this county 
in this town. You have to think of all the people that put the effort into this uh, day. It starts months back, of course, and uh, it was great to see the floats and uh, the bit of humour as well is very important. And I suppose uh, uh, the heritage, uh, there was a lot of that on view today, so it was great to see it. And uh, sure, it's a great family day and great for the youngsters to get out. All credit to the organising committee, they really pulled it off again year after year. They put a lot of work into it. And particularly, like, the day was threatened to be in Clement. It's worked out okay especially the schools and uh, the bands from the schools and that, and that which is really a fine, hard now, fine day. It really added to the atmosphere and it was so well received right around the town was our Grand Marshal uh, Thomas Langer. The grand finale when he, when, when he, when he closed the whole thing out with, uh, with uh, that famous song, You'll Never Walk Alone. Um, I know it's associated with a particular football club. That I, that I don't actually support, but I certainly enjoy that rendition today. It was absolutely tremendous. Almost time for us to go, but before we do, can I remind you there'll be a repeat of this programme on Saturday next at 8 o'clock. And don't forget, coming up after the break, we're handing over to Manchester to join Martin Logan, who's out and about once again with the Irish community. Well, we're going to leave you now with our Grand Marshal singing a great classic song, You'll Never Walk Alone. So until next week, Slong of Fall. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of a storm, there's a golden sky and a sweet silver song of the Walk on through the rain. Well, everybody. Walk on through the rain. Though your dreams will be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and your mind. Thank you.